Welcome to audio commentary for StabMovies.com's short film Swipe Left. I'm director Joshua Patrick Dudley. Normally I would say I'm the writer and the director, but this short film actually wasn't written by anyone. It was conceived by all of us that are in it, and we worked together as a team to come up with the storyline, but we didn't technically write any of it. Even the lines in the movie are ad-libbed and just kind of made up on the spot. This is actually my second time doing this commentary because I just figured out that this computer has been messing up my audio recording, so I hope none of the other ones I just posted are messed up. If they are, I'm sorry. But yeah, Swipe Left came about because we had rented, rented this house out in western Massachusetts that we were going to use as the sorority house for the original movie we were filming called Theta. And it was supposed to have about 11 or 12 other girls that were showing up out in Western Massachusetts to film all of the scenes that took place at the sorority house in Theta. So the day of production, we start getting phone calls and messages from a couple of random people that are telling us now all of a sudden, even though it's been planned for months, that they can't make it and that they're not going to be able to show up. And some of these people were even bringing other people. So now these other people that they weren't bringing... Uh, these other people that they were bringing weren't going to be able to make it either. So we had nothing to do, and Nicole was already with me, Rachel had already shown up, and Dan was really close to being there. I think he was about a half hour away when we got there. So there was only four of us there, so we had gotten in contact with the rest of the cast and kind of said, hey, you know, what do you guys want to do? Like, are any of you still planning on coming out here after all these people cancel? Because if you do, we'll throw together a short movie on the spot because we spent $2,000 renting a house and we don't want to waste it, so we might as well make something cool out of it. And so we told everyone the idea, you know, we had come up with that it was basically a tinder date that's gone wrong and this girl ends up being in a house of horrors so as you can see here my character the first character she kind of interacts with is the serial killer so each character in each room is kind of a stereotype from a horror movie he's the serial killer stereotype uh Originally, there were more people coming, so there was going to be a poltergeist stereotype. There was going to be a vampire stereotype. And this unexpected attack right here, where she gets pulled out of the room by someone else, introduces another stereotype, and this guy is the cannibal. And Nicole and Dan really had fun filming this, and we kind of came up with the idea that since he was a cannibal, he'd want to taste her, so he kind of toys with her and licks her and he's perverse about it and, and then finally climaxing with him trying to bite off one of her fingers so which we actually used Hershey syrup for the blood here because uh, it was so dark you couldn't tell the color of the blood anyways and all the light was red so that's all actually Hershey syrup and the flickering of the lights that you're seeing aside from some strobe lights that are colored but the chandelier that's flickering is actually Rachel standing in a corner flickering the lights to make it look like that so Rachel thank you for your lighting genius so Nikki's character kind of escapes here and re-encounters me and then she's got Dan coming at her from the other side Cannibal Dan. So she escapes into the one room she thinks she can escape into, a dark room. And she kind of slowly packs her way in. You can tell it's really foggy in here. We had fog machines and black lights. She scares herself in the mirror. She thinks she's okay. And then, of course, she can't be because it's another room. So, bam, Rachel's character appears. And I love Rachel's character in this. Rachel has always wanted to play someone who's possessed, so this was like a dream role for her. So we had a lot of fun with it. And Dan did the makeup on her that made her look so gruesome and possessed and disgusting. That cross, actually a leftover from the production of the short film Bloodlines that we had filmed. Not sure why I had it with me. Uh, but yeah, we brought the cross and it worked out well for this part right here. Nicole did such a good job there making it look like her back was breaking and then Rachel projectile pukes all over her and that was actually a mixture of some soups that we had found in the house that we rented and it was gross. It got everywhere. It took forever to do a laundry. So the basic idea here, Rachel's character says plot twist and her head was supposed to spin all the way around, but we couldn't get the effect to work. So you see it in this last shot here. You're supposed to see her body is sitting one way, but her head is facing us. She's now become part of the house. <laughs> 